Welcome back. Let's take a look at uh, practical side of iOS XR. In the lesson number two, we're going to use uh, XRV in this case and PE1 in this topology to take a look at some of the basics of iOS XR. So first of all, when we log in by default, the username and password is Cisco and Cisco. The CLI that we get in iOS XR is, um, as I explained in the previous lesson, um, the RP means route processor, slash zero means the single rack chassis, slash zero means that RSP, route switch processor, and CPU is always going to be zero in the case of XRV, and host name is PE1. It takes a little bit of time to get used to iOS XR uh, CLI uh, if you come from the background of iOS. So let's take a look. Similarly, like iOS, we can do show IP interface brief and we take a look that we have a management interface in this XRV and three um, data plane um, interfaces. So one of the main differences, uh, suppose that we want to change the whole, make a change. In this case, we're gonna try and change the host name to R1. If we do show config, it shows that the host name is R1. So this is the candidate config, but the running config is still the same. So XR does not write the candidate config into running config like iOS XR and XE. So when we do show config, it is the candidate config displaying that host name is still R1, but the running config is still the one that is used by the router. Soon as we commit, XR is going to write the candidate config to the running config. And that's where you will see the host name is now changed to from PE1 to R1. So this is something that we need to get used to. Um, we've come from background of uh, iOS as we already guys who work with the Juniper and other OSs are used to the committing uh, config and the concept of commit. As we'll take a look later on, it saves us uh, uh, from a lot of problems in the future. So let's take a look at uh, IP addresses. For example, if we want to sign the IP address on the interface, uh, we can go under the interface and type IP address. And when we take a look at the actual config of the interface, we see that it's not IP address, it's IPv4 address in iOS XR. However, the command is backward compatible. If you type IP address, it will still take it, but convert it into IPv4 address. But it's better to get used to typing IPv4 address um, in iOS XR as this backward compatibility may disappear in future versions. So we see that we change the IP address and it's been taken by the CLI and it's converted into IPv4 address. The other way we can assign the IP address is IPv4 address 10.10.1.2 24. And we can also use prefix notation to assign the IP address as well, slash 24. So three different ways of assigning IP ad address, but I would say that we get used to using IPv4 address um, to assign IP address, whether you use a, a slash 24 or a mask notation, that is uh, entirely your choice. So let's uh, change the address to 10.10.1.2/24 and try to exit the config without committing. If we try to exit the config on iOS XR without committing, it will give you the log uh, message that saying that the changes are found and you want to commit no or you want to cancel the operation. So if we say yes, it's going to commit the config, no, it's going to come out without committing or you can cancel and go back to the config again. So in this case, we said no and we go back. Let's take a look at the rollback. Each config that is committed is saved in a separate file and numbered with hierarchical order. So let's say that uh, if we want to roll back to a particular config, 
In this case, we say that we're going to roll back config to last one. So the last change that was made and um, iOS XR is going to go and roll back config to that last change. You can roll back config to any of these changes that are saved in the list. To take a look at uh, show configs, uh, like we changes like iOS, we can run show config changes, and that will give us the last changes that have been made on the in the config. That's a very similar feature to um, show history. So let's uh, take a look at uh, commit confirm. So suppose that you've made a change, and you're not sure what impact that will have on your uh, live router what you want to do is you want to say that i am going to commit the config but if i did not confirm the commit within the 30 second in this case by whatever time you specify system is going to roll back the config back to original config how many have been in this situation where we had a remote device and uh, in ios and ios xe days that we had to make a change in the ACL or any other major change, major changes, and then we made the change. And because in iOS it was instantly applied, we lost the connectivity to the router and telnet session, and then we had to call for a remote support. So this is a lifesaver uh, in in terms of that. Next, uh, we're going to take a look at. Uh, we can actually name each changes with a, a label so therefore uh, we can always go back and take a look what change was made so we're going to make the um, host name changes and say we're going to label it to a label called host name changes we're going to take a look at a show config commit list we can either do list or a detail that will label it so that if we come to restore we can go back and restore and to a point where we saved. We can either use a detail or a commit list command that will give us a similar detail of the with the labels. Uh, by default, the label is a, is a random number, uh, sorry, a sequential number, but uh, you can label it um, um, to make sure that uh, you go back to a certain point of change in the config. If we use a commit replace, we're saying that we're going to replace the commit with uncommitted changes with the commit the changes that are not committed so in this case we have no uncommitted changes therefore it's going to replace with blank so when we do show run we see that we have no config so this is a feature you can use um, uh, to uh, clear the config and uh, and uh, add it back again of course you will lose traffic in the data plane if you try it on the live router but here we have the rollback now we can go back to rollback and we can say rollback config to whichever rollback we want uh, so in this case we're going to say last one so it's going to roll back to last saved config and we have our config back again just to uh, recap the feature means whatever uncommitted changes i have i'm going to replace with that so basically you have no uncommitted changes and it's going to replace it with a blank config so we can always restore back from the rollback next we're going to take a look at uh, some of the basics of uh, routing protocol configs uh, we're going to have a dedicated uh, lessons for each uh, protocol likes of ospf isis bgp um, ldp and layer 3 vpns and multicast vpns etc in the coming lessons but just to go through some of the basics of how uh, the hierarchy different is different from uh, cisco ios we're going to just quickly take a look at uh, for example if you're configuring ospf we're going to go under the router ospf in this case one we define the area first and then define the interfaces that are going to be participating in the area in this case we're saying gig 0000 and 1 are going to be under area 0 when we commit the config we take a look at the running config we see that in xr we have the routing process that is 1 
area we define first the interfaces that are going to be under the area so most specific and most indented config uh, is preferred for example let's say that if we want to define um, the network type of one interface uh, different than the other the one is more specific under the interface will take effect for example if the network type is broadcast for the whole routing process but for the area 0 and interface gig 0000, the network type is point to point. And for interface gig 0001, network type is point to multi point, for example. So, what happens is that in the order of hierarchy, we see that the network type is broadcast for the routing process but in this case the most indented under the interface type will take effect for gig 000 it is point to point and for 0001 it is point to multi point and they're both under area 0 the next uh, we're going to take a look let's say that uh, if we want to um, if we make a change by mistake and the parser doesn't have the error check built into it but when we try to commit the config the, the we will see the warning message saying the config is wrong and we have to correct it so what we're going to do is we're going to go under we're going to create a area one and place the interface 0001 under the area 1. So when we commit, the parser didn't have that check built in, but it's saying the fail to commit one or more configuration items during the pseudo atomic um, process. I failed. Please issue show configuration failed inheritance to see the errors. So when we issue the command, we see that it's giving us a clear indication the interface gig 0001 is in different area and we know that the interface gig 0001 is in area 0 already so we cannot be participating in two areas so this is a kind of example where we will not have the uh, the error check built in the parser like iOS and iOS XE but once we made the config we're going to make uh, commit and that's when we're going to know and we can always go back and and make the change and then the commit the config again either you can notepad the config correct it and paste again or do it individually similarly if we want to configure let's say LDP it's uh, unlike iOS is going to be under MPLS LDP routing process so we're going to go under the routing process of MPLS LDP and enable the LDP on the interface is required in this case is gig 0000 when we look at the routing process we see that MPLS LDP is configured for the interface we're going to be doing a lot more videos on iOS XR in, in coming days. I'm going to go ahead and cover all the other protocols and uh, in very basic way um, of iOS XR using OSPF, ISIS, BGP, Layer 3 VPNs and other elements or service providers. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the subscribe button and uh, leave the comments. Let me know what you want so that I can make video accordingly and if you know someone who can take value from this please share this video. I look forward to see you in the next video. Thank you.